in today's video, we are going to be using our fluid paints on a dry canvas along with our blow dryer to create a one of a kind magical princess peacock. So sit back, relax, and let's get started. Hello, my friends. Welcome to another video. If this is your first time here, thank you so very much for joining me. If you are a returning viewer, hello again, my friend. So today we are going to create a beautiful sleeping princess peacock using a dry canvas, fluid paints, and our blow dryer. I'll also be teaching you some very simple brush strokes that will allow you to create a magical 3D effect in your painting. However, we first need to start with an idea. So my idea was to draw a sleeping peacock on this canvas that I just painted. Titan Buff, I believe is the name of the color. It's just an off-white. So I wanted to create a peacock that was sleeping, whose tail was kind of bent backwards, fluffed over its head, almost like a shield of protection for it. So I sketched out a simple peacock, very simple. I want to keep this simple because I am not an expert sketch artist and I know a lot of people watching me are beginners. So I always try to keep these things simple. So I went to Pinterest, as you just saw, and got some ideas off of that just for like the head part and, uh, yeah, Pinterest is a great place for inspiration. So I'm using four simple colors that I just mixed with some Artist Loft pouring medium. I did not add water or anything to the paints as you just saw. Just some pouring medium in a cup, few drops of the colors, and mixed together. It's that simple. So again, this is a dry canvas. There's nothing on the base. So when you put fluid paint on a dry canvas like this and try to blow it, it's going to be hard to move, but you can move it. And um, I wanted to contain the paint. I did not want it flying all over the place. So that's why I chose this method. However, if you're more comfortable putting some wet paint on the canvas first, just like a white or just a base coat, you can more than do that. I wanted to do just the tail part with the fluid paint because I wanted it to dry quicker and I wanted to be able to paint my peacock quicker. So, you know, doing this, I was able to paint on this canvas the next day. Everything was dry. So I filled my cup with the four colors and I kind of just poured it on the canvas in the area that I wanted the tail to be kind of in the shape that I wanted the tail to be, even though the tail is going to end up being much bigger than this, this was a starting point for me. And I do want to apologize for the shadows in some of these clips. Unfortunately, I have to do my art at night a lot of the times and, uh, you know, it's really hard for me not to get those shadows it's not in the whole thing, but you know, here and there you're going to see them. So please be patient with me. I'm currently looking for better lighting. So this piece just, it was so much fun to do. And I hope that it inspires you to give something like this a try. Uh, so you see here, I'm just pouring down the paint a little bit at a time, blowing it out and then adding it where I think I want to make the tail a little bit wider. So I'm going to speed this up a little bit because it's pretty much just the same thing. I'm just blowing the paint out into somewhat of a peacock tail shape. I also used my fingers to create some movement and some feathering. 
And then I came in with a paintbrush and did the same. Now, I'm going to tell you, this thing at certain points looks a hot mess. <laughs> but as you saw in the beginning of the video, it turned out absolutely stunning. So, you know, this is just my way of kind of experimenting to see what works the best. Like you can see where with the paintbrush, I'm doing that feathering motion. It was working nice, but kind of just dragging it straight down. It was not working so well. So, um, you know, it's a great way to just kind of get a feel for paintbrushes, but using that paintbrush in creating a light sweeping motion with your hand creates a very beautiful feathering. So here we are the next day and I'm kind of just using a sponge to erase some of those areas I didn't like. You can see the canvas edge there. I had actually taped the edge so uh, those drips won't be there. The edge will be clean when it's all said and done. So now here is some Prussian blue, same colors as I used for the tail. Um, I'm just going to start, you know, using my paintbrush and painting in some designs now that it is all dry. So to create the sort of look that I got today, you're going to have to do this in multiple stages. You're going to have to paint in some feathering and some, uh, I guess, eye of the feather. I'm not sure what those little uh, round medallions are in the peacock feather, what the technical name for them is, but uh, you're going to have to do what you see me doing here multiple times, and I'm going to show you how to do that. So I started off by dipping my brush in the blue and the turquoise deep and kind of just stroking it along, creating a feathered look. And I did that over the entire tail area and even into some of the off-white area. Again, my idea was a sleeping peacock princess. She's a princess with her big, beautiful tail just fanning backwards over her, almost like a roof to her home, you know? So, uh, yeah, I did the, the feathering motion all throughout the tail with the two blue colors I was using, or the, I should say the blue and the turquoise deep. And then I did the same exact thing with the deep violet and some white. Um, it was a lot of this. I've sped this up quite a bit. I feathered and feathered until I could feather no more. <laughs> and mind you, this is just the first layer. I did three layers of what you're about to see here because you want to be able to create depth and make it look lifelike. And when you see the finished result, you're going to see, you're going to look at this painting and it's going to look real. Like you can actually pick up the, the feathers and touch them so it's a really cool thing to try. And I really, really hope you do. I've done multiple of these paintings over the last a uh, very long time. I don't even know now, but uh, they are just a lot of fun for me to do. It's taking acrylic pouring, which for some can be over way too fast. And uh, it's taking it a step further and using your imagination to create something that nobody else has done. So now I'm coming in with the deep violet and the white. It's making this beautiful striking pink color and I just love it. If you can pay attention to my hand, I'm kind of just taking the brush and lightly sweeping. I'm doing a sweeping motion with it. And it creates those nice little brush strokes that look like feathering. So once I was done doing this to the entire tail, I came in with a white pencil and I sketched in where I wanted the eye of the feather to be. Eyes, I should say, because there's a ton of the eyes on this. 
Um, I sketched it in first just to make sure I liked the way that it looked. And then I went back with some black paint uh, because the paints I were, was using were transparent. I didn't want you to be able to see those feather strokes underneath my eyes. So I kind of just sketched these out, painted them all in black, and then I came back with my paints and filled them in all a um, turquoise greenish color. Some though, I shouldn't say all, some of them I used a glitter on and the glitter is color shifting. It's absolutely gorgeous. It's by Color Passion. You can get this glitter through artistilldeath.com with a discount. I will make sure I put that in the description. So to use this glitter on some of the eyes, what I did was mixed it with some clear glue and just filled in some of them. The other ones, I painted a the deep turquoise color. I added some gold. And then I did a little bit of light blue. And what you're going to do once you're done doing this first layer is you're going to let everything dry. Let your glitter glue dry. Let your paints dry. Finish up any little details that you have to do, such as for me, I had to start creating the headdress and um, do a little more feathering around the inside of the tail and uh then I let it dry like I said for a few hours and I came back for the next step so that um glitter that I used right now it looks like it's a green turquoise-ish color but if you walk around the painting it changes colors it goes to a light pink color it's just so pretty so now we're going to start working on this peacock body. And I had this cool little stencil that I wanted to use. I thought it would look cool. So I just used a sponge and sponged on lightly some of these little, I think it was a peacock stencil design. I, I don't know what to call those, to be honest, but I know it looked really cool. They could have been scales, some kind of a scale, but... I like the design for the body just to add a little, you know, something special to it. So I painted them on there or sponged them on, I should say. And then I came back in and I painted that bar that runs underneath the little triangle. I painted that gold, left the triangle that light blue, and I added a Swarovski crystal to every one of the triangles. I just used some clear glue and uh, put the crystals on and let it rest so it could all dry. So while I have a minute here, I just want to thank everybody for coming today. And I want to announce a few things. First and foremost, the winner of the free private one-on-one -on -one lesson with me is Christina Bona. Christina, congratulations. Email me, artbytammy at yahoo.com. And for those of you that may be sad that you didn't win, stay tuned because I'm going to be doing this every month. So in April, you just may be the lucky one. Also, I've had a lot of inquiries about me hosting a resin class here in Connecticut, and I'm here to tell you that that is going to be happening. So if you would be interested in taking a resin class in Connecticut, send me an email so I could put you on the waiting list. So now I'm using a Semelier 3D acrylic paint liner. I'm going to try to remember to put these products in the description for you, but uh, I bought this at Blick. And I'm just going to outline all of those little bars that run underneath the triangles.
So how do we create the 3D look? Well, you're going to use some KS resin to create the 3D look. What's going to happen here is I'm going to put down a layer of resin and I'm going to let it cure. And then I'm going to paint on top of it with my acrylic paints, the second layer of feathers and eyes. What it does is it creates a little thin layer of, it looks like glass when it's dry, in between each layer. So when you go to hand paint, it looks like those things are floating on top of this first layer that you painted. I love using resin for this. It's very simple to use. Mix it for three minutes. Make sure you scrape the sides of the cup, the bottom of the cup, your stir stick, and pour it on and spread it out with your hands all over the surface. Rub it on the sides. Give it a good torcheroo with your torch and let it rest for 24 hours. Then you could come back in and paint your second layer. Now, I taught a resin class, which by the way, I'm going to be teaching a resin class in Connecticut soon. So stay tuned for more information on that. But I taught a resin class and so many people said to me, I cannot believe I was afraid to use this stuff. It's so simple. And it really is. As long as you follow the directions and you use proper safety equipment, you will be great with it. So check this out. Pay attention to the feathers. So I'm standing in front of it, right? Now watch this. So it's hard to see, but I'm trying to show you the reflection from sunlight, how the feathers change color. Oh, this is so, this is going to be dropped and gorgeous. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. So now that this layer is dry, I'm going to come in with some acrylic paint and paint right on top of the cured resin. I'm going to paint in some more uh, feathering, some more of the, uh, I don't know what they're called, eyes of the peacock feather. We're going to go all the way through the tail again, just like I did on the first one. And then we'll also start working on building uh, this headdress up here too okay so again there's a layer of cured resin on here and it is okay to paint on top of it with the acrylic paint as long as you seal it in with another layer of resin if you don't use another layer of resin you'll be able to scratch it right off the surface so you want to make sure that uh you put another coat on so thankfully we have technology and I could zip through this <laughs> and uh, not make this a five hour video. Actually, the whole process of creating this took me, I timed it, it was 18 hours. It was a lot of work, especially this feathering part. It takes a long time to get all of those in there. But anyway, I did exactly the same thing that I did on the first layer, painted in some more eyes, some more feathering with all of the uh, blues and the pinks, let it dry, put down some little crystals on my headdress, which unfortunately I did not film that part, but I just painted it a light blue with some of the turquoise deep color. Let it dry, like I said, and put another coat of resin on let that sit for 24 hours, came back, did another layer of eyes and feathers, and whoa, just a lot, a lot of work. So now that it's finished here, I'm going to show you the final results. All right, before I show you the finished results, I want to show you the depth. I'm hoping that you can see how it looks like there's piece on top of piece on top of piece, you know, with the, the feathering that I did. Um, it is so cool. You know, there's, I love just putting that extra layer of resin in between. 
to be able to do something like this. Yep, yep, yep. I love it. I love it. All right, are you ready? Here she is, the Princess Peacock. I love it. <laughs> it is so pretty. So pretty. I'm sorry, you're going to see reflections like that in here. There's nothing I could do. I absolutely love it, and I hope you do too. So I got a question, well, a few questions as to uh, whether or not I'm all right because I haven't been releasing videos on Wednesday, and I am perfectly fine. It's just that I want to be able to take my acrylic pores and transform them into something like this. Like, I showed you how to blow paint out on a dry canvas to do something like this. I want to be able to even take just like, let's say, a ring pour and transform it into something like that. And to do that, it takes time. And so I find myself rushing a lot when I release two videos a week and I can't do the things that I really want to do with my acrylic pouring videos. So that's why I'm choosing to release once a week for now. I'm not saying it's going to stay like that permanently, but for now, I'm going to be releasing on Sundays only at 3.30 so that I could do fun things like this, right? And I hope, you know, you, you like this kind of thing and you enjoy it. I know I certainly do. And for me, it's all about the art. I want to have fun when I'm doing it. So I don't want to rush videos out and just put anything out there for you just to, to release a video and get some views. That's not me. I have been creative my entire life. So this is therapy for me. <laughs> So just remember, you know, check your, your notification bell. Make sure it's on the word all. I subscribed to a couple of channels this weekend and was shocked when I went to the notification section and it was automatically clicked off on personalized. Now, when it's checked off on personalized, you only get notifications for, re for video releases every once in a while. If you want to know when all of my videos come out, just make sure it's on the word all. I have a lot of exciting things happening for this channel in the next few weeks. So uh, I hope that you stay with me and uh, learn with me also. Again, in the month of April, I will be offering another free one-on-one -on -one class. So uh, yeah. Yeah. Just my way of saying thank you and trying to give back a little bit. And speaking of classes, Connecticut classes are being offered. So if you want in-person learning, check out the description of the video. Or you can email me, artbytammy at yahoo.com if you're a TV watcher. I'm going to also be setting up a resin class here in Connecticut an all-day resin class, which will be fun. Uh, so, yeah, I will let you guys know more information about that as soon as I have it. If you are interested in a resin class in Connecticut, then you can also send me an email, and I'll put you down on the waiting list. I just need to talk to the venue owner where I rent and uh, make sure dates are available, okay? Okay. But yes, I'm offering acrylic pouring, in-person acrylic pouring classes here in Connecticut, and soon resin. And the last thing I'm going to tell you is that I love you all, and I hope you all have a magnificent Sunday, or whatever day you're watching this. And until the next time, happy pouring. <laughs>